Welcome back to The Infection Tube. I'm Sella, and joining me once again is Dr. Max, who's currently deep into his research. Today, we'll dive deeper into the cellular warriors of the innate immune system, exploring each cell's unique role and mechanisms. Last time, we uncovered the swift actions of neutrophils and the versatile might of macrophages. Now, Dr. Max might seem busy, but we can't wait to explore more about the fascinating defenders of our bodies. Dr. Max, I know you're busy, but our viewers are eager to learn about dendritic cells, natural killer cells, and mast cells. Can you spare a moment to enlighten us? Of course, Sella. There's always time to explore the fascinating world of our immune system. Let's dive into the roles of dendritic cells, natural killer cells, and mast cells. These cells are crucial in our body's defense, and I'm excited to share their unique functions with our viewers. So, after the macrophages, who else plays a key role in our immune defense? Next in line are the dendritic cells, Sella. They are like the master librarians of our immune system, cataloging and presenting the stories of invaders to educate and prepare the immune system's adaptive forces. How do dendritic cells start their journey in our body? Dendritic cells start their lives unprogrammed in the innate state, similar to novice librarians who are yet to specialize. They are found across various locations in the body, each type distinguished by unique markers and differing levels of activity. What happens when pathogens invade? When pathogens invade, dendritic cells capture these microbial invaders. Using their dendritic extensions, they process and read the information contained within these pathogens, similar to scanning new books into the library's system. Where do they go with all that information? Once they've gathered enough information, these cells journey to the lymph nodes, immune system hubs. Here they undergo a transformation, maturing and developing the specificity needed to present this crucial data to the unprogrammed T cells. What do they do in the lymph nodes? In the lymph nodes, dendritic cells display the antigens on their surface like librarians presenting a rare book. This presentation educates T cells about the specific threats, sparking an adaptive immune response. They also release cytokines like IL-12 and type 1 interferons, which are like urgent alerts that boost the library's defense protocols. Sounds like they're quite active in the immune response. Absolutely, Sella. The information relayed by dendritic cells isn't just a one-way communication. It's part of a sophisticated network where feedback from T-cells further primes these librarians to enhance their defensive strategies, ensuring a robust response to invaders. Dendritic cells are more than just passive collectors of information. They are active participants in the immune response, constantly updating and informing the system to maintain the body's health and balance. Let's summarize. Dendritic cells are the immune system's librarians, cataloging and presenting invader information. They start unprogrammed and capture information from pathogens. They travel to lymph nodes, mature, and present data to T cells. In lymph nodes, they display antigens and release cytokines to boost immune response. They form a network with T-cells to enhance defense and maintain health. Dr. Max, now that we've covered dendritic cells, which other cells play a vital role in our immune defense? Next, we have the natural killer cells, or NK cells. Unlike their counterparts in the adaptive immune system, these lymphoid cells require no prior exposure to specific antigens to recognize and eliminate threats. What makes NK cells so effective? NK cells are equipped with a remarkable array of sensors, activating and inhibitory receptors that detect distress signals emitted by troubled cells. Their mission? To protect the body from invaders like herpes viruses, flaviviruses such as dengue and Zika, as well as challenging threats like HIV and the novel coronavirus. How do they respond when they detect these invaders? Upon detection of a virus-infected or malignant cell, NK cells spring into action. They release deadly perforins and granzymes, creating a lethal cocktail that breaks through the enemy's defenses, leading to its ultimate destruction through apoptosis. Do NK cells ever accidentally attack the body's own healthy cells? That's a great question. Healthy cells, however, bear a passport, MHC class 1 molecules, which signal to NK cells that they are friendly forces. This interaction inhibits the NK cell's lethal response, safeguarding the body's own tissues. 
It sounds like NK cells have roles beyond just defending against infections. Absolutely, Sela. The role of NK cells extends beyond just defense. They are crucial mediators in maintaining the delicate balance during pregnancy, protecting the placenta without harming the developing fetus, which is considered half foreign by the immune system. What challenges do NK cells face? The realm of immunity sees NK cells confronting various challenges. In obesity, their numbers decrease, impacting their ability to fend off cancer. Age brings immunosenescence, reducing their effectiveness, though exercise has shown promising results in increasing their numbers and activity. How have NK cells been involved in recent global health crises? In the recent pandemic, NK cells have been at the front lines. The severity of COVID-19 in individuals has highlighted the critical role of NK cells, especially their ability to secrete type 1 interferons, a key antiviral weapon. To summarize, natural killer cells require no prior exposure to antigens to recognize and eliminate threats. They have activating and inhibitory receptors that detect distress signals from troubled cells. NK cells protect against herpes virus, dengue, Zika, HIV, and the novel coronavirus. Upon detecting infected or malignant cells, NK cells release perforins and granzymes to destroy them through apoptosis. NK cells help maintain balance during pregnancy, protecting the placenta. Challenges include decreased numbers in obesity and reduced effectiveness with age, though exercise can help. Dr. Max, what about the cells that play a crucial role in allergic reactions and inflammation? Can you tell us more about mast cells and their functions? Let's explore the dense, complex environment of the body's tissues, where eosinophils and mast cells stand guard. These are not ordinary cells. They are the body's specialized protectors, each with unique powers and responsibilities. Can you tell me more about eosinophils? Certainly, Sela. First, we meet the eosinophils, vibrant and dynamic. Residing mainly in the gastrointestinal tract, these cells are known for their ability to release extracellular traps. These traps, filled with granules, release a series of chemical weapons when triggered, fighting parasitic invasions and defending against viruses and bacteria. How do eosinophils affect our health? Eosinophils are nurtured by cytokines like interleukin-5 and interleukin-13, making them crucial in maintaining intestinal health. However, their presence is a double-edged sword, as they can also mediate conditions like eosinophilic gastrointestinal diseases and inflammatory bowel diseases. Do they have roles beyond the gastrointestinal tract? Indeed they do. In a dramatic twist, eosinophils collaborate with platelets to influence heart health, potentially promoting atherosclerotic plaques and thrombosis. Their extracellular traps have even been implicated in the progression of asthma, illustrating their complex role in health and disease. What about mast cells? What role do they play? Now let's turn our attention to the mast cells. These cells are the guardians in the interstitium of tissues, armed with a variety of receptors like toll-like receptors and receptors for anaphylatoxin C5A. What happens when mast cells are activated? Upon activation, mast cells spring into action, releasing powerful mediators like TNF-alpha and interleukin-8, preformed within their granules. These substances signal neutrophils to rush to the site, initiating the inflammatory response. Do mast cells have other functions? Absolutely. Mast cells also produce histamine, heparin, and leukotrienes, key players in inflammation and allergic reactions. Their role extends beyond simple defense. They modulate bone metabolism and help in the maintenance of alveolar macrophages, highlighting their adaptability and importance in the body's ecosystem. To summarize, mast cells are crucial in allergic reactions and inflammation. They act as guardians in tissues with various receptors. Upon activation, they release mediators like TNF-alpha and interleukin-8. They produce histamine, heparin, and leukotrienes. Mast cells modulate bone metabolism and support alveolar macrophages. Well, Sela, we've explored the defenders of our immune system today. If you found this journey as fascinating as we did, please give us a like, and don't forget to subscribe to InfectionTube for more insights. And here's some exciting news. We're launching a quiz based on today's discussion very soon.
It's a great way to test your knowledge and see what you've learned. So stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed to participate. Thanks for joining us and keep an eye out for the quiz. It's your chance to challenge yourself and deepen your understanding of how your body fights infections. Keep those subscriptions coming and get ready for the quiz. We can't wait to see how well you do.